Hello in the session of engineering materials and metallurgy. Today we will discuss about the Germany and Quest hardenability test. So this test, what is the purpose of this test? How this test is carried out, the process includes and what will be the change in the hardness of the material that we will learn in this session. So hardenability, it is uh, one of the important property proposed metal is a hardenability. So one of the important property of the metal is a hardenability. So hardenability is the capability of an alloy or metal to be hardened by heat treatment. So hardenability is, is the ability of the alloy to be hardened by using a heat treatment process. In hardenability, it measures the depth of hardness obtained by heat treatment or quenching process. Hardenability is not the same as that of a hardness. That is nothing but hardness and hardenability. These two are a different thing. Hardness is the mechanical property of the material or alloy. And hardenability is the, uh, the process of increasing the hardness of the metal. So the hardness of a steel refers to its ability to resist the deformation when a load is applied, whereas hardenability refers to its ability to be hardened to a particular depth under a particular set of condition. So this is the difference between the hardness and hardenability. Next is a Germany test. That is the name of scientist who discovered the test for the hardenability. So the Germany and Quest test measures the hardenability of the steel. As already discussed, hardenability is the measure of the capacity of steel to be hardened in depth when quenched from the austenizing temperature. So here in this diagram, you can clearly see the sample that is a standard specimen for Germany and Quest test is kept in the furnace and it will be heated to the austenizing temperature that is nothing but a 953 degrees Celsius temperature. So why Germany test is performed? So the information gained from the test is necessary in the selecting the proper combination of alloy steel and the treatment to minimize thermal stresses and distortions when manufacturing components of various sizes. So that is the need of the Germany test. Next steps to conduct the Germany test. So here uh, first a sample specimen cylinder, either 100 mm in length and 25 mm in diameter, or alternatively 102 mm by 25 by 25.4 mm obtained. Then second step is uh, the steel sample is normalized to eliminate differences in the microstructure due to uh, previous forging and then uh, it is austenized. Thus, it is usually at a temperature of 800 to 900 degrees Celsius is heated in the furnace. Next third step, the specimen is rapidly transferred to the test machine where it is held vertically and spread with a controlled flow of water onto one end of the sample. This pulls the specimen from one end Simulating the effect of quenching a larger steel component in water. Because of the pulling rate decreases as one move further from the quench end, one can measure the effect of the wide range of the cooling rates from very rapid at the quench end and to air cooled at the far end. Next, the specimen is a ground flat along the length. 
to the depth of 0.38 mm. So the 15 thousandths of an inch to remove the decarburized material. So here uh, some filing is provided. So in diagram also the specimen is a uh, hold at with the help of collar. Then heated to the austenizing phase that is a seven fifty three degrees Celsius. Then cool to the running water at one end, which is equal to twenty four degrees Celsius. So the for flat ground Rockwell hardness by using the Rockwell hardness testing machine. The hardness is measured from the free end. So in large step. Next step, the hardness is measured at interval along its length, beginning at the quench end. For alloy steel, an interval of 1.5 mm is commonly used, whereas with carbon steel, an interval of 0.75 mm is typically employed for measurement of the hardness value. Then finally, the Rockwell or Vickers hardness value are plotted versus distance from the quench end. So here in graph you can see on x axis there will be the distance from quench end and on y axis there will be the hardness hrc so here initially at quench end hardness is higher you can see clearly see at the curve here hardness is higher and it will be reduced from the quench end so up at the collar end it will the hardness value is the minimum so the, this is called as a hardenability curve for the steel the Jomini and test data illustrate the effect of the alloying and microstructure on the hardenability of the steel. Now the summary of the Jomini and quest test hardenability test. So round test bar is austenized, heated the proper temperature from 100 degree, 100 percent austenite. That is a 750 or 753 degrees Celsius. Not 750, 950 degrees Celsius. Then a bar quenched at one end. Then quenching media is water, brine solution, or maybe oil, maybe molten salt, air, caustic solution, polymer solution, and gases. So hardness decreases away from the quench end of the bar. So this is the summary. Then commonly used element that affects the hardenability of the steels are carbon, boron then chromium, manganese, molybdenum, silicon and nickel. So the carbon is primarily hardening agent in the steel, although to a small degree, it is also increases the hardenability by slowing the formation of perlite and ferrite. But this effect is too small to be used as a control factor for hardenability. Second is a boron can be an effective alloy for improving the hardenability at a level as low as 0.5%. So the boron is the most effectively in the steel for of 0.25% of the carbon or less. And finally, showing the phase transformation of austenite to ferrite and perlite increases the hardenability of the steel. Chromium, molybdenum, manganese, silicon, nickel, and vanadium all affect the hardenability of the steel in this manner. So chromium, molybdenum, and manganese being used most often. So the cooling rate varies with the position. So here in this diagram, you can clearly see for perlite cooling rate is different at the center of the sample. For fine perlite cooling rate is uh, different. For martensite plus perlite cooling rate is different. And for martensite that is at the uh, free end, the cooling rate is very faster. So the from higher temperature that is 950 degree Celsius temperature at cool end it will be at free end it will be suddenly cooled and at uh, another end that is collar end it will be slowly cooled by air so that will be the normalizing cooling so there will be the formation of the perlite phase so here you can clearly see uh, at a free end there will be the more hardness because the water quenching is done at the end and apart from this end, this area will get hardened by using the normalizing heat treatment. So in here, there will be the martensitic phase. Here it will be the perlite phase, not martensitic. And where water is applied as a coolant, there will be the martensitic phase. Here the phase is martensite plus perlite. And here phase is the 
fine perlite not fine perlite coarse perlite for uh, germany and quest is for 0.4 percent of carbon so this is the curve for 0.4 percent of carbon so how the hardness is going to vary so for the various samples so this is for 1040 type of the steel this is for 5140 type of the steel this is for 8640 type of steel and this is for 4340 types of the steel so at this position there will be the hardness at the quench end and this will the hardness value for the free end so that is the distance from quench end then this is the for alloy steel contains the nickel chromium molybdenum so this will represent the cooling curve for the cooling curve for the alloys so the hardness will going to increase at the martensitic phase so the effect of quenching media so what will be the effect of quenching media and geometry that we will going to see here so if air is there then uh, severity of quenching is low and hardness is also low if quenching media is oil then severity of quenching is moderate and hardness is moderate if quenching media is water then uh, quenching severity of quenching is high and hardness is also high then effect of geometry when the surface to volume ratio increases cooling rate increases and also hardness is going to increases so the position cooling rate and hardness at center cooling rate is low so hardness is low at surface of the component cooling rate is high therefore hardness is also high so this is the diagrammatic representation of the arrangement of the sample so germany and test that is the sample dimensions uh, the diameter uh, nearly 25 mm and uh, 100 point that is 100 mm is the length that is a 4 inch and 1 inch is the diameter in inch then collar is provided at one end and another end is free then at the bottom you can see the nozzle dimensions are also given so this is the nozzle water at 20 degrees celsius so the nozzle size is given a uh, point a uh, 12.5 mm as the size then this is the diagrammatic representation of the apparatus so this is the water stored into the tank then this is the sample is hold at the apparatus with the help of this collar and uh, through this pipeline the water is spread so here the nozzle is there so water umbrella will be formed and uh, it will uh, perform the cooling operation or a sudden quenching operation at the end of the sample then the filing is provided to remove the rust on the surface after that at the various distances from the free end the hardness value is measured so here number of readings are noted down from the distance from the quench end with a certain uh, length so after that the results are uh, plotted by using the graph so for the free end the hardness value is more and whenever we are apart from the free end that is quench end the hardness value will be going to reduce so in this way we can uh, study the germany and case test for the hardenability thank you for watching the video